Hello, so it's July the 15th, 2020, and today I want to touch on one of the most delicate topics there is, one that most people won't address for fear of being labelled racist, and that is the demographics of the UK and how our population is going to look very different in a generation or two. And I stumbled across a chart the other day in a Department of Education research paper from January 2019 called Schools, Pupils and Their Characteristics, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Here's the chart, and it shows that white British now make up 65.5% of kids in primary schools, in, in state-funded primary schools. And kids from minority ethnic origin, that's Asian, Black, non-white British and so on, make up 33.5%. So that's 65.5%. White British, 33.5% um, minority ethnic origin, and 1% is, is unclassified. Now, my eldest two kids are mixed race, so I'm not sure which category they come under. Now, bear in mind, this is the whole of the UK, so it includes primary schools in remote rural parts of the country where white British will be, you know, probably 100%. Where I am in, or maybe not 100%, but, you know, 95% plus. Where I am in South East London, in the borough of Lewisham, white British makes up, you know, in some primary school classrooms, less than 10%. Now this 65, 35 or 65 and a half, 33 and a half ratio compares with 80, 20 back in 2006. So that's a 65% rise in 13 years. And another 65% rise in 13 years would take us to 54%, thus white British minority by 2033. What is the case in primary schools will, within a generation or two, reflect the population as a whole? Demography is destiny, as the old saying goes. White British have long since been a minority in London. That landmark was reached in around 2005. There'll be a minority in Birmingham next year, I read, and the rest of the country will follow. Now, some will see this as a good thing, champions of multiculturalism and so on. Others, traditionalists, old school conservatives, uh, will not. Is it a good thing? A bad thing? Doesn't really matter what your opinion is. That is the trajectory we are on. There are more people in the world than ever before, and more of them than ever before are on the move. Whether they're displaced by wars, by lack of water, by poverty, hunger, or whether they're looking simply for better opportunities. Can you blame people for wanting to move to improve their lot? It's quite natural and normal. And as we have better planes, trains and automobiles and boats than ever before, people are gonna be able to move quicker and further than ever before. And this is a global migration of people of historic proportions. It's a tide in the affairs of men. And as someone who isn't crazy about national borders, I've always had a fairly relaxed attitude uh, towards movement of people. If you want free minds and free markets, then you have to have free movement as well. However, if you want an expansive and benevolent welfare state, then open borders don't work. Infrastructure, transport, schools, healthcare, welfare, they all get overwhelmed. Free markets can quickly adapt to large scale mass movement of people, supermarkets and clothes shops and technology, for example. Tesco's has adapted fine. State systems, education and the NHS, restrictive planning laws, it makes it a different matter. It's harder to it just can't move as quickly. And the reality of the world in which we live today is that we do have an expansive welfare state and national borders. And the UK, in the way that it currently operates, will struggle with immigration levels, or it is struggling with immigration levels of over 200,000 a year. I think we're at 300,000 a moment at the moment because we don't have the infrastructure. Now, how do you get the numbers down? Or do you even want to get the numbers down? In the face of this global mass movement of people, should the state defend local people and local ways? Many feel that the UK authorities aren't doing that. That in fact, institutions from the BBC to the police, in bending over backwards to be not seen as racist, are doing the opposite. 
whether it's through, you know, not properly policing child rape gangs or knife crime or bias and discrimination in the media, changes in the way history in particular and other subjects as well are taught, even something as banal as banning saying Happy Christmas. And I think the Red Cross and certain councils did actually do that for fear it offends non-Christians and replacing it with bland statements like season's greetings. These are all ways at which long-standing British traditions and ways of doing things are eroded. Maybe they need eroding, but no wonder so many people feel threatened uh, by what is going on. And I'm not sure what the answer is, but the sooner we can talk about this openly and honestly, without just screaming racist and without fear of people screaming racist at you, the better. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, please share this with a friend. Uh, I'll post a link to the uh, report in the comments below.